Now then, I was just doing some belt sandering and the belt ripped. I thought, all right, okay, it happens occasionally. And then I uh, replaced the belt and the new one ripped. So time for an investigation. I've already found the problem, but can we sort out the, uh, the repair? So let's zoom in. This is a belt sander. It's a Makita, formerly Wolf, four-inch angle uh, belt sander. I'll just do a quick clip of the label. Focus. Not for, there you go. Okay, I've had this since. Oh, difficult. The mid 80s, so it's nearly 40 years old. And as some of you know, I used to make stairs for a living, so it's done a lot of work. And um, along with all my philosophy, is if you see another one, even if it doesn't work, grab it. So we've got some spares, so let's crack on with it. So, first thing is, normally there's a pad here, and one I thing I learnt quite quickly was, it's held on with those four screws, is once the pad has worn out, and it's got some sort of mica finish on a, uh, something that used to look a bit like, cork but really thin you just use a couple of old sander belts and that's a sander belt you see that works really well okay so that saves you loads of cash now then can we see down here see there the roller is starting to break up and that's really soft there so I say that roller wants changing luckily and we'll zoom out again the roller on the other one seems to be okay but how do we get this off luckily we've got one to investigate and uh, experiment no the belt goes like that so there's the motor and there's this and if you can see the input shaft there and the roller shaft are out of line which means there's a gearbox in here um, and so that might mean that this pulley doesn't have to come off which would be you know you could quite easy dive in to try to get that pulley off and there's a little dimple there you think is that an allen key is that an allen bolt it's not it's just a uh, a machining center so we'll undo these screws and with some hope we might very well get to the other end of that roller shaft. Now what do you think? Yeah, it's a gearbox. Grand. Okay, now I think there is a circuit there. We need a bit of cloth. Yeah, there's a circuit there. Yep, good. So I need the circlip pliers. Let me just zoom down. 
and we'll go that way and hopefully you can just see that circlet there there we go so we'll take that off and hopefully this gear will lift off and that shaft will push out be back with you in a moment okay let's see if we can there we go lovely can't beat having the right pliers can you so and we got a washer there okay right well that feels like that will lift off so we need a prying instrument there we go yeah and there's another washer there and there's a a key there right ah and it just pulls out oh isn't this a joy hey none of this press fit nonsense because your machining is rubbish okay so we have a roller that's pretty good yeah it looks very good actually okay so now the good one just make sure it's unplugged You know, you really can't beat quality and you don't get it anymore. And I think this, I don't recall, I don't remember having to change this belt ever. And it's done a lot of work, which is quite impressive if it's true. So we'll undo these screws and we want to put everything in a different place so I, from what I remember there's a circlet and then two shims oh. yeah then the gear comes off and the key comes out and the shaft pushes out I mean, what a joy! This all goes back to... Oh, I don't know... The late 70s maybe? Yeah, I got hold of one of those um, BMW... See that grease, that one's washing out one of those BMW um, look-alikes uh, was it called a Ural or something like that a Russian uh, motorcycle and the machining was was pretty damned appalling it, this doesn't want to behave itself does that want tightening up at all? no um, So it had ball racers as main bearings and they were really tight on the shaft. You see this just unlike that other one. <coughs> anyway, it's come off. Although it started to spring. Anyway, so an old motorcycle engineer that I knew, he went bit of wet and dry mate on the shaft really careful might take half an hour but just take a couple of thou off those shafts and then get the bearings to sort of 
not glide but just just on the tight side of glide to come off and I did that and it was just a joy to put together so when I did well the battery just went flat but uh, where was I when I did the still 026 rebuild um, series quite a long time ago there's the gear and the keyway I applied the same principles and there we go look at that that is really hammered but I don't know why that's gone all soft like that anyway I applied the same, the same principles and you know it was easy to put that chainsaw together you don't want it really loose you want it a sort of fit I'm just going to clean that out I'm not going to clean all of it out but I'm going to clean some of it out and put some fresh grease in and it looks like there's a little roller bearing down in there so that will want a new bit of grease yeah I think the grease got a bit hard don't you right I'll be back with you in a minute okay we've cleaned that out a bit now if you notice there's an extension there's a long bush there so we'll put some grease there so it's a very long support bush with a bronze bush in it very nice we're putting this in the right body we're putting this in the right body okay work that through that's brilliant okay. so do remember how this went together before I do any more I'm just going to poke a bit of grease down in that little roller bear in there there's the keyway There we go. Oh, it's here. Here we go. Here's the gear. And that goes on there. So let's just put a screwdriver handle there. Two shims. Come on, that's it. There we go, the circlip's in there. Just so easy. I shouldn't say that, should I? And there's not even a gasket here. So we'll dump a load of grease in there. Not too much, because you'll get everything locking up but sufficient and we've got a bit on there and then that's it it's there wow the screws back in now 
What's the Jeff Bradshaw rule? Does anybody remember? Have you seen Elderly Iron? It's quite an old channel and some of the early stuff is just spectacular. Got this big old V8 engine that had been laid upside down and I think it's a five part series. Is it a 289 or is it a 389? I can't remember. But he got it running and um, and ticking over and working hard and all that sort of thing. I think it was a Pontiac engine. I'm not I don't know about all that sort of thing. I know there was a lot of um, same engine, different car, different name, all that sort of thing. Did you see that though? Start them all before you tighten any. I think I've gone on a, about that before. That's grand. Can you see how it would be so easy to go hell for leather and try and remove that pulley? Yeah, and end up breaking it or destroying something when you don't actually need to do that whatsoever. So that goes on there and this goes behave let's go halfway on and then let's go down another one yeah and again, these multi V belts, if you've not seen it, go and have a look at my series of videos that are um, rescuing and remotoring a Denby, a large Denby pillar drill. And I ended up using something not much, well, six wide, uh, a belt off a washing machine and direct drive driven onto the original flat belt, belt pulleys with a can't remember three quarter horsepower motor it's beautiful it really is amazing I think I did yeah you've probably seen it because I did that recent video something about drilling large vintage holes or something like that anyway I think we're done So where are we? So we put a couple of extra bits of belt under there, like that. And let's get a belt. In the early 90s, here's one, it's brand new. Yeah, in the early 90s, once we were still making staircases, I bought a whole load of these. 80s, 120s and 60s and as you see I'm still using them so that was worth buying wasn't it so the arrow there is pointing that way and the arrow there is pointing that way and the overlap this piece overlaps that so there's not an edge facing that way. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we'll just pull that like that. Put that on like that. Chomp. Job done. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm going to put this other one, wherever it is, not in shot. I'm going to put the various bits together on that one because there's no point um, leaving them floating around loose so that when I need more bits I know where they are oh that's mighty tight and this one was a bit loose but 40 years worth of work comments discussion hope you enjoyed it
catch up with you soon. Bye for now.